Hey everybody, Marcus Crawford here with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel. I'm back out at Lucky Peak Reservoir today and uh, finally they opened up the uh, Vista Point area that I like to fly at. Uh, it's kind of a little peninsula that goes out into the reservoir and it's really cool. It's a good spot. There's plenty of room here. So I'm kind of uh, uh, under a little canopy here that's made out of metal so we'll make sure that we get good compass calibrations on the drones today uh, but what I have is the Femi X8 SE 2020 I also have the 2018 version with me and I have the Hubson Zeno 2 now uh, I've been wanting, since I did that last video out at the Snake River Canyon with the two Femi's uh, I've got some suggestions uh, from some, some of my really great commenters. Uh, I, I got some pretty cool people that watch my videos and Doug Bell pointed out to me that when I was changing the white balance on the 2020 version, he said, hey, it looked, and it was just an FPV. I wasn't even recording video at the time, but you could see it. He told me what spot it was in the video and I went back and looked and sure enough, he goes, Hey, when you switched from auto white balance to sunny day white balance, it changed it radically, yellowed it, turned it warmer, and it didn't look as good as it did on automatic. So I'm going to leave this guy on automatic today, and we're going to take a look and see how the video looks. And then uh, my friend Ron Brown did a video this morning with his Hubson Zeno 2. He, he was flying along the beach at uh, Margate City in New Jersey and he was showing the differences between flying this drone into the sun and, and how poorly the camera performs going into bright situations. In other words, no camera is going to look good direct, looking directly at the sun, but the Xeno in particular really washes things out and has a sun flare issue. But the other thing that he pointed out is when he was flying the other way, with, with the sun at the back of the drone, it looked phenomenal. It looked really good. So let's get these two drones up together. And this is summertime and the, the sun is kind of in the middle of the sky. So we're not gonna be facing directly into the sun no matter which way we go. So it'll be a chance for us to compare the, the video on these two. And then also, I brought the 2018 version of the Femi with me and we'll do the same thing. So we're going to set them all on 4K 30 frames per second. Uh, this guy, because it has HDR capability, we're going to turn that on uh, and then uh, we're going to uh, set them all to white balance on automatic. And uh, just, you know, we're not going to get too serious here, but just kind of Give us a chance to look at the differences in the video in these drones that are, you know, sub, I'm gonna call them sub $500 drones. So uh, anyway, let's quit messing around. Let's get these guys in the air. I've been wanting to fly this guy ever since uh, we thought about that white balance issue. So I'm gonna put the uh, 2020 version of the Femi up first. Okay, uh, I've got the drone fired up and the uh, controller and the app fired up here so we're going to enter device see what we see uh, yeah it's in I had the switch and return to home mode so we're going to switch that back to flight mode it's got 12 satellites let's uh, it says it's ready to go uh, I suspect when we get up it'll find some more satellites uh, let's look at the status symbol real quick and magnetic environment is weak so I'm not going to do a compass calibration it's not asking me to uh, everything else it says is normal uh, Let's, uh, just for the fun of it, let's check and see if it asks for any kind of uh, firmware updates, just for the fun of it. Yeah, there's nothing lit up here, so we're good there. Uh, it's always worth checking, and it's always something I like to do. So now we're going to go into the camera here, and uh, uh, we're going to take a look at our settings. And uh, as I've said before, often this drone will default not often, every time, video quality defaults to medium, so you have to go in and set it to high so that you get that, that, uh, that bit rate. 
uh, and then uh, white balance we're going to switch it to auto and I can see the difference on the screen there uh, again thank you Doug Bell for pointing that out let me uh, sorry about that let me check again make sure yeah we're in 4k 30 colors on general uh, we're using the uh, H265 uh, codec so uh, if you're hearing some noise in the background some people pulled up and they're kind of screaming and hollering <laughs> this is a public spot so uh, okay I am going to uh, well I was going to start recording but it says no card so I think I need to I'm looking at the bottom let's start recording and see what happens because there is a card in there yeah now it says no so I bet what we're going to have to do is is uh, go in and format that card I've had this happen before with this drone let me check the uh, let me check the bird okay so uh, <laughs> I didn't do a very good uh, pre-flight check because what happened is the card wasn't completely engaged in there so uh, shame on me something you should check so let's uh, let's try it again it's format SD card yeah so we're good to go now uh, so again that's a cautionary tale learn from my mistake you should always check that first uh, so we got 15 satellites. Let's go ahead and start recording. I'm going to double check those camera settings again just to make sure I, you know that, that card didn't mess anything up and we look good. So, we're going to start recording. And uh yeah, we got nothing to do here but take off. So, I'm going to step out of the way so you can see the takeoff. And we're going to hit that right now. So there it is, and it goes up to uh, about four meters high. And we got a little bit of wind here. It's a fairly uh, windy day, so we'll let it take take a look at its spot. The drone's moving around just a little bit. Uh, let's see if we can bring it down. I'm not going to bring it in too close because I've got the camera under a canopy here. But we'll. Uh, We'll bring it in a little bit so you can take a look at it. So there's the drone uh, right there, and let's we can uh, jig it back and forth, and you can see that uh, that the gimbal is working as it should. Uh, okay, I think uh, there's probably nothing left to do, but. Uh, do our uh, our usual up and away shot. So uh, we got a vehicle moving out here. So we're going to go backwards and up now. Drop the camera down here a little. So that's always a good look at Vista Point here. I guess you guys can probably see why I like to fly there. You can see the uh, the, uh, the the dam in the background, and we're out over the reservoir. Lots of boats out there today. If we had the Mavic Air 2, we could track them. Okay, that's probably uh, that's probably far enough, uh, so that you can get a look at that. Let's. Uh, I'm going to do a, a yaw to the right here. And we'll fly. Uh, we'll fly up the reservoir just a little ways, so you can take a look at it. So there, ladies and gentlemen, is Lucky Peak Reservoir. So, uh, so we're going to fly up the reservoir just a little ways here. We've gone quite a ways down there before. Adjust our heading just a little bit. Stay, see if we can stay right in the middle of the lake or the reservoir if you prefer. We're out a kilometer. I mean, really great signal with this guy. 
Uh, like I said, it's kind of a hazy day today. We still are getting a lot of smoke from the uh, California wildfires. We'll have terrain blocking our signal here in a little bit, so I won't get too carried away here. We'll go out about a kilometer and a half here and we'll turn around and come back. So again, we're going to yaw to the right. And I'm not uh, going to get hung up on doing exactly the same thing uh, with this drone as, uh, you know, in other words, I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't, I'm not going to get hung up on flying both drones on exactly the same pattern. So what I'm aiming at here, this is a, uh, a, a kind of a camping picnic area that's only accessible by boat. And I can see that they're starting to drop the level of the reservoir already. Uh, in the summertime, the reservoir would be right to the top there. And you can see those docks there. So you can pull up there in your boat. And there's, I see some people standing out there. And there's, uh, there's docks there and picnic tables and so forth. And you can, you know, pitch a tent out there and, and, uh, We'll fly right over the top. Where do they have a jet ski there or something it looks like? Yeah, it looks like a little jet ski, huh? Or no, maybe a little boat. Yeah, it's a boat. Okay. Well, we don't want to fly into the side of the mountain here, so let's turn a little. pick up the camera and then you can see kind of on the uh, uh, right hand side of the screen there that's where I'm standing on on the Vista point and we'll fly over uh, towards the I, I've I've flown from what they call the uh, Turner Gulch uh, which is the boat ramps where everybody puts their boats in now we're not gonna fly over the dam because that is a no-fly zone like most dams are, there, it is a uh, there is a hydroelectric portion of the dam. Although the primary reason for this reservoir is irrigation water, and there's a diversion canal just a little bit down the Boise River uh, that they divert some of the water for agricultural use. So there we come around this uh, little. Uh, peninsula sticking out in the water here and we can see the boat ramp and I've flown from there uh, quite a few times although I prefer to fly here from from uh, Vista Point pretty cool the boat ramps there lots of lots of good recreation here and, th and they set up those those only accessible by boat picnic areas all over the reservoir so really provides a, a lot of uh, a lot of good recreation and it's and it's pretty close to Boise I mean it, I'm gonna say gosh if you're on the east end of, uh, of Boise southeast end of Boise it's probably I don't want to get too close to the dam there we are gonna yaw around here there again is Vista Point so we'll bring it back over the top of us uh, I lost my my train of thought there. That what I was going to tell you. Oh yeah, I guess it's probably about probably five miles from from the uh, southeast end of Boise. So very 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 accessible area. And that highway you see going up there goes to the mountains, goes up to uh, Idaho City, Idaho. So just our hit. Oh, too much. Sorry about that, guys. So we're going to fly up this little draw here. I should know what this is called, but I don't remember right offhand. Drone is right over the top of us right now. Down to 60% battery. Uh, ooh, we lost connection there. I'm standing under this uh, 
So the reason that we lost connection there is I am standing under this metal uh, roof. So I readjusted myself so that we get a better look, get the antennas pointed at the drone. So I'm going to drop the gimbal down here and there's another one of those, uh, well I mean you can see some along the side here but but uh, yeah see there's one on the on the right hand side of the screen and this one on the left here I've looked at that many times. Let's see if we can kind of circle around it. I always thought it would be cool. Well, yeah, see that car parked right off the highway there? Uh, it looks to me like there's a trail going down there from, uh, from the highway that you could actually get down to that. So you could hear Harley Davidson coming in here. They put those loud pipes on them. They like you to hear them coming. Oh yeah, look at that. We've got some uh, some of the uh, firefighters that are parked there too. Let me uh, let me pick the gimbal up here. You'll be able to see them. So I don't know what fire they would be looking at. Going, I mean, I know of no fires that are close by here, but that's definitely uh, one of the firefighting trucks. Most of the fires are in, uh, wow, I even see some, I'm looking up the road and there's some lights on here. Yeah, see that pickup right now? I'm, I'm, I'm facing them where I'm standing and he's got lights on. So they're doing something there. I don't, I don't know what they're doing, but they got something going on. Anyway, we'll stay well away from them. We're not going to mess with that, so. It looks like it may be something official going on, so we don't want to get uh, in anybody's way. Okay, let me pick the gimbal back up here so we can see where we're going. And we'll come right back over the top of Vista Point here. We're in normal mode, and I have got the stick pushed all the way forward. About 11 meters per second, cruising right along. Down to 49% battery. So I'm going to adjust the heading here a little bit. So I'm right on top of that, right in the middle there. Sorry, I messed up that yaw, but anyway, so I'm kind of on the left hand side there. You can see that little picnic table, that's where I'm standing. Okay, so let's do one more thing. Let's bring the drone uh, back in front of us. And uh, this guy does a really good uh, orbit. And one of the things I like about uh, this guy is that you can, uh, like I said, it just does a really solid orbit. So just doing a yaw there so you guys can kind of see some of the country. So there we are down there. Let's drop the camera down. We'll get over the top of us here. And we're going to stop right there. It is almost over the, exactly over the top of us. There we go. Okay, so uh, with this guy, you Put, punch the little, looks like an Android guy down there at the bottom. And uh, we are going to go into orbit. And we're going to click OK. So we are setting center. And then we are going to back off. And, and it will tell us how many, uh, tell us our radius. Which I think is great. OK, so we're about, yeah man, it doesn't take long, huh? About 77, 76 meters. So we're going to set radius. Let me pick the camera back up here. You know, we're going to want to be further out than that. 
because I want you to get a good look at the point here. Okay, we're out there quite a ways, about 100, 185 meters. And so we're setting radius, and I want to go counterclockwise, and uh, we want to center. You always want to set center on this guy so that it will uh, uh, keep the camera pointed at the center of the circle. So we're going to click go. And it's uh, it always takes this thing a second to... Uh, to, to get the, uh, uh, to take the command, I meant to say. Yeah, that's kind of slow. Let's speed it up a little. And there's a slider. You can see the slider at the bottom there. I kind of doubled the speed of it. So, you can take a look at Vista Point. You can, I think you can probably see why this is just an awesome place to fly from. Okay, we're going to stop right there. And let me pick the camera back up. Give you that view of the dam. And you can see how... Uh, how hazy it is out there and, and basically this is pointing kind of roughly towards Boise. I guess Boise would be a little bit more to the right. But anyway, let's do a return to home and let's see if this guy will get uh, precision landing for us. And it's coming back. Let's drop that gimbal down as it comes. See how close it can get. Make sure that you guys can see it on screen here. Yeah, you can see the landing pad. So, it's quite a ways off. We'll stop it here. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not even close. And I can tell you in the past, I've had this thing be very good. Well, look, it might be coming towards it here. Well, it might zero in here. Landing pad detected, so. Looks like we're going to get it. Boy, I, I, I was kind of losing confidence there, but, uh, but it did it. I'm looking at the drone right now. It's moving around a little bit in the wind. It's going to be okay, though. It's going to be, the wind is really pushing it around. Yeah, so uh, it's a little bit off the pad there, as you can see. Sorry, I should have picked up the camera. I was... I always forget that, that this drone does not uh, pick up the camera when it lands. So we're at 28% battery and what I always appreciate about Femi is it shuts off video when it lands. So that's about, you know, 28% is right about where I like to run a battery down to, you know, 25%, something like that, uh, so you don't damage your battery. Uh, Okay, let me get this guy shut down and let's throw the, uh, the, the Hubson Zeno 2 up in the air next. Okay, so uh, I got everything hooked up here with the Zeno 2, but I'm getting a not connected. Uh, it, it tells me the cable is not connected and, and both ends are fully in, so I'm going to pull one out and try it again and see. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, it's giving me a USB cable not connected. Uh, I'll show you here. We are we are fully connected with with both cables. So, uh, you know, these Hubson cables have been known to go bad. I, I might I think I've got a spare here. So, 
Let me see if I can switch out the cable. Okay, I switched out uh, the cable to another known good cable and it's telling me ready to fly so it, it must be that cable uh, like I said uh, Hubson is known for having issues with their cables and clearly that was it so you can see this is an aftermarket OTG cable uh, it's always worth it to carry that kind of stuff around uh, in case you need it and I was fortunate to uh, to have that so uh, let's uh, we messed around long enough. Let's look at our camera settings. So white balance is on automatic. Uh, we're not setting video, so let's switch it to video so that we see that. Uh, you know, I just thought of one thing. When we were flying the Femi just then, I did not put it in HDR mode. So that was just 4K30 with the Femi, not in HDR. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, video resolution is in 4K. Uh, and frame rate, is, you know, it says 60 here, it must default to that. We're going to put it into, into 30. Okay, it took that. And uh, there, there's really, unless you're going to shoot slow motion, there's no reason to shoot in 60 frames per second. 30 frames per second is plenty. White balance is on automatic. Color is on ordinary. Uh, so we're good to go. Got a little wind that just uh, came up here. So I'm going to start recording now. And I don't see any reason why we can't uh, take off. We got 14 satellites, uh, plenty of battery power. So we're going to hit take off on the screen. I'm going to get out of the way uh, so that you guys can see this. So there we go. And and in typical Hudson fashion, it's uh, it's moving around a little. Holy cow, is it moving around? I'm going to move it forward a little bit. I'm going to get some altitude. Let's uh, yacht around here. Boy, I'll tell you what. These Xenos, they like to rock and roll a little bit. And, and you just, you know, the kind of close flying that I can do with, uh, with other drones, you just can't do with this guy. So we're not going to mess around. Uh, that's good. I'm going to drop the gimbal down here just a little bit and we're going to go uh, reverse and up now. Got another bike coming through, so I'm going to get the drone out of the way. You can see where we're at here. Full reverse. Nice good look at Vista Point there. And we are up about uh, 23 meters high. Let's uh, let's get some altitude here. And there again, you can see the dam there in the background. Boy, I'll tell you what, uh, it sure looks good. And, and you know, we've got all the settings in automatic, and I could see it uh, kind of change there as we as we came up. That's about the height that we were at with the uh, with the Femi X8 SE 2020. It's giving me a uh, giving me a card error. <laughs> then we just lost FPV. I've used this same card in this drone many times. Unfortunately, this was a harbinger of things to come with the Xeno 2. So. Ultimately, we did not get any footage on this day out at Lucky Peak to compare with the two Femis. Uh, just ongoing problems with the Xeno 2. I tried a couple different SD cards and some other tricks, rebooted several times. I spent probably an half an hour trying to get the uh, Xeno to uh, have reliable FPV and to record video and wasn't successful. However, I did uh, work on the drone next day and I believe I came up with a solution, but we'll save that for another video. Uh, and, and again, I'm not going to make you sit through all this, so we'll move on. Uh, we'll do a landing here and then we'll move on to the uh, 2018 version of the Femi. It's uh you can see it's coming down here. Okay, so I've got the uh, Femi Navi app fired up and the drone and the controller. So we're going to click enter device. And it says GPS ready to go. We've got 12 satellites. Let me uh, 
uh, and we're already in video mode let me go in and check our status just to be sure so status magnetic environments good IMU is good batteries normal compass is normal so we're good to go there uh, all right, so we're going to go in and check uh, our uh, camera settings as well. Uh, pardon me. Uh, so, 4K 30 frames per second. We are in video mode. Video quality is high. White balance, we are going to switch to automatic, just like we did on the other ones. Uh, what, what little we had uh, with, the, with the Xeno 2. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and start recording. No reason not to take off now. So we're going to hit take off on the screen and make sure you guys can see it. You can. Auto take off. So, uh, I don't know if you noticed my Durango there. I must have accidentally hit the button in my pocket. The rear gate was open on it. Uh, okay, we got some pretty good wind, but this guy is hovering real well. Uh, unlike the uh, Hudson, uh, these Femis hold pretty good. I'm not gonna say that uh, they're as solid and stable as a, uh, uh, as a DJI product, but they do pretty good, so. It's pretty windy, we're not gonna bring him in too close, but we'll jag back and forth here so you can see how that uh, gimbal's working. And uh, let's lower the camera just a little bit before we take off, and we're gonna do our usual uh, reverse and up droney. So reverse and up. And again, we're going to get another good look at uh, at Vista Point here. So we should have some of that footage from the Xeno 2 if it saved to that card. I hope it did. I'll find out when I get home, and at least we can compare that much. We're at about 60 meters high, so that's about pretty good. So again, that's a similar view to what we had before. Uh, Let's uh, let's yaw around here, just like we did before. Try and get a nice slow, even yaw here, and we'll go we'll go uh, up the reservoir a little bit. That looks pretty good. So full stick forward, and we're just in normal mode. Let's see uh, how fast this guy will get up to here. Well, we're doing pretty good. It's got to have the wind with it 16 meters per second. Although I've noticed that this one is typically it is faster than the 2020 version has been. And I noticed, look at our signal strength meters at the top there are kind of going yellow. But, uh, you know, other than that, it looks good. I mean, our FPV is fine. I'm going to straighten out our, our uh, heading just a little. Try and stay in the center here. And I think we went out about a kilometer and a half with the uh, 2020 version. So we'll do the same thing with this one. Almost there. And there again, even though, uh, you know, we're getting some kind of orange on the signal uh, meters there I mean I see no problems with the uh, with the FPV or you know control of the drone so okay we got a boat coming here let's yaw around and okay it's a little bit stuttery there yeah a little bit stuttery yep we got some break up there as we're yawing around here so that probably has to do look at all that break up there with the with the way the antennas are pointed and look at all of a sudden we're in yeah red with the FPV so let's let's go forward here and bring it back to us I'm gonna I'm gonna try and go towards that same little spot that we flew over uh, with the 2020 version 
and yeah we're, we're we're doing better here so I'm gonna say that definitely will tell you that the signal on the 2020 version is definitely stronger no doubt about it but we do have 16 satellites and we're doing good I, that, that wasn't bad I mean think about it we were out there a kilometer and a half so we we're out there a ways Ooh, yeah so FPV breaking up so I totally missed my gimbal movement there see that that's where that good uh, FPV signal helps you so that caused all that jumbled mess but anyway that's that same little dock area and you see how people are just kind of having to beach their boats there where normally they could just pull up to one of those docks they're already dropping the uh, the level in the lake and and by the middle of the winter it will really be down there yeah and look at boy we're look at the, our signal and we and we're pointed right at the drone too that's me on Vista Point there and there's that boat I'm going full stick forward here yeah we must have had the wind at our backs when we were going out there because we're I'm at full throttle and we're only about 12 meters per second but but this is a very powerful drone I mean the wind just isn't a bother with this guy and you can see we're coming in closer here and I'm kind of staring it around I'm gonna go back uh, and and take a look at the uh, Turner Gulch uh, boat ramp We'll see if we can catch up with this guy. We don't seem to be. I'm looking at him going by in front of me here. He's moving right along. Okay, I'm going to angle off to our left. Back towards the Turner Gulch boat ramp. And you've seen me fly from there before. So, you know, I'm just judging by FPV here, but it definitely, uh, definitely, on my FPV screen, this video looks a little bit darker. And I have direct line of sight on the drone here. Yeah, and as we drop it down, you can see it's in full auto, so it lightened things up a little bit. But we're still getting some blotchiness on the, uh, on the screen there. Okay. We're going to turn around here. I, uh, again, uh, I do not want to get too close to the dam here because that is definitely a no-fly zone. So we'll go straight back over the top of us here. So again, we are at full throttle. And I am facing directly to the drone. And uh, even at that, we, we just have yellow well I saw we lost some satellites so we got them back now but that signal should come in stronger the closer we get here and here she comes boy I love flying from Vista Point here it's just a just a fun dramatic place to uh, to fly the drone at let's adjust our heading just a little see if I can center us up and I'll see if I can drop the uh, camera as we come over the top and that's me standing there right underneath that shelter and there's the drone goes screaming over the top of us and I'm picking the camera up because I want to know where I'm going we're gonna go off to our right here that was a bank to the right and then we're going to adjust our heading with the yaw and I'm going to turn around so I pointed the antennas at the drone and we do again have that uh, we have the, this, the shelter kind of between me and the drone so although it looks like we got good signal I'm looking at the signal strength meter and it looks really good so that looks uh it's, it's a very good signal how you doing i'm right in the middle of 
charge. We're just going to be up here for a minute. Okay, I got an aircraft in the air here. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay, so uh, so this is that spot that I always show you in these videos. So let's uh, let's see if we can kind of maybe circle around it here. I always tell people that I don't mean to be antisocial, but no, 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 no. yeah, yeah. No, we understand. We Our, hey, thank you. <laughs> so where's the plane? Uh, it's oh, you've got off a, up this way. Oh, you've got a. Uh, I've, yeah, yep. Okay. So this is that. Uh, this is the the, uh, the that little picnic area that I've told you about before in other videos. I always just like to take a look at it. And so this is where we saw some activity earlier when we were flying the uh, the 2020 version. I don't know what was going on, but I can tell you a little bit later uh, some. There was some police activity up there, and that's why I got the hell out of there. I don't know what the heck was going on, but it uh, makes me think they were looking for something. Although, there was also there was also a fire truck there, too, so, but I didn't see any smoke or anything, so I don't know what that was. We can kind of get a little closer here. See what's going on. So... What I forgot about on this guy is we can put it into SAR mode here and get some zoom. So let's do that. And let's see if we can zoom in here a little bit. So that is full zoom and that looks like somebody that just maybe they're just thinking about walking down that trail too. Okay, let's zoom back out. if I can get the slider to work. Yeah, I, I hope I wasn't too abrupt with those people that came up, but you know, when you're flying the drone, you really want to give it your full attention, and, and uh, you, know, you know, people are always curious, which is great. I mean, I love telling people about these drones, but, but not, when I'm, not when I'm right in the middle of a flight. Okay, we're going to take it out of SAR mode. Maybe. There we go. Hit the X. So yeah, we're back into regular mode here, and uh, let's just do uh, just like we did with the uh, uh, 2020 version, and uh, and maybe we can do a little bit of an orbit here. We yeah, we're down to 39% battery. We should be able to do that. By the way, I keep my batteries separate between the 2020 and 2018 version. I people say that they're identical. But, you know, the drones use different software, and they are smart batteries, so I don't mix and match. I, I keep them separate. And boy, look at that. A uh, little bit of blotchiness on the FPV on the screen. Okay, we are going to stop. See if I can get it right over the top of this. Yeah, and you can see I had the camera pointed straight down, but when I let off, it still uh, it still moved that uh, that that uh, camera around a little bit. Okay, I'm going to back it up just a little, and we're going to spin it around the, where it's facing the other way. It's directly above us, so that's why you're seeing a little bit of blotchiness there, and I'm under this canopy, so. Okay, so let's go into uh, orbit, and we're going to do the same thing that we did with the 2020 version. We're going to set the center, and now I'm going to back it off, and as I recall, we were out there quite a ways, like I think it was like 185 meters, something like that. So let's back this baby off. Hundred and sixty. Yeah, that's even a little bit more. So that's probably further than we had the other one. So we're going to set our radius. And we're going to go counterclockwise. Remember, we were too slow on the last one. So let's kick this guy up to about 6.4 meters per second. Always put the heading on center. And we're going to click go. And, and again, I've noticed with this drone, 
Yeah, it's it's given us a because uh, we're down to 28% battery, but but we're not so far out that we can't continue to fly here. Seems like we didn't get as much battery uh, power out of this one as we did uh, as we did with that newer battery in the 2020 version. So as soon as this guy uh, gets around in front of us, we'll stop this circle and uh, and we'll bring it on home. But that gives you a really good look at Vista Point here. I just think this is just, uh, I, I just am tickled to death that I got a place like this that I can fly the drone from. And I can't remember if I said it uh, before, but this is, uh, because this is managed by the Army Corps of Engineers, you do have to get a permit to fly here. So uh, there, okay, we're going to stop right there. Uh, so, I have a permit from the Army Corps of Engineers and they don't even, they say you don't even have to ask us to fly out here, just tell us when and where you're going to fly. So, like, I just sent them an email the day before, said, hey, I'm going to be flying from Vista Point, got an email back from them, have fun, you got your permit, you're good to go. Uh, so, they're, they're pretty cool about it. So, okay, we're going to hit return to home now, uh, I'm going to flip the switch on the controller and uh, and we'll see if this guy will get how close this one will get up my, my experience is the 2018 version isn't quite as accurate as the 2020 I suspect it comes down to processing power and we're down to 22 percent battery we'll drop the gimbal down and hopefully I can remember to uh, pick that gimbal back up before it just uh, before it lands, I I always uh, forget to do that on this drone. Most other, well, all DJI products, the Hubson Xenos do it too. They pick that camera up when it as it's coming down. Yeah, and it's telling me landing pad not detected, but so did the 2020 version. This is almost identical to what we saw with the 2020. So let's see if it uh, recognizes it here after a point. I mean, I think we have pretty good contrast there with the with the orange uh, landing pad. But if it looks like it's going to land in the weeds, we'll stop it. Yeah, it's, I don't think it's going to get it here. Oh, well, maybe. Yeah, it's not, uh, it's not seeing it. I'm going to pick up that camera. Okay, we're going to stop this. I'm gonna try and stop it. Oh yeah, yeah. I forgot. I didn't do it on the so I just had to switch the switch back. Uh, but anyway, so let's we're gonna bring it over here, and you'll see where I'm at, and uh, we'll bring it forward. And it's a little bit windy. So again, uh, I think I'm close here, but my depth of field or is depth of perception is not the greatest. Yeah, we need to be forward a little bit more. Okay, pull down. Well, that was close. Low battery, it says. Uh, and again, uh, thank you, uh, Femi, for stopping video so you don't end up with a corrupted video file. Uh, and we are down to what about 15% battery or so there? Yeah, 15 or 16%. Yeah, 15%. Uh, so we ran that battery down, I think, as far as I would want to do it. So. Uh, let me get everything shut down and we'll do a quick conclusion. Okay, so uh, I had a lot of fun flying today. Uh, the intention was to fly three drones, but I think we kind of flew two and a half drones, I'll say. Uh, had problems with the uh, with the Hubson Xeno 2. Uh, you know, it was giving us the card error, but I don't think that's it. I think it's related to the ribbon cable on the camera. 
how do I know that? I know other people that have had problems with them. And knowing that, I had preemptively ordered a new ribbon cable, so I've got one. So I'll be able to just replace that and hopefully get that guy back in action. But that said, here's what I'm going to tell you about that Zeno 2. And you saw it when we took off here. It's not as stable. There's just a lot of there's enough issues with that drone that I have trouble recommending it. Now, if you got a great deal, you know, if you were able to pick it up for 350 bucks or something like that on some kind of sale, I've never seen it that cheap, but if you were, you know, maybe, I don't know. Uh, but you can buy this guy for $389, the Femi X8 SC 2020. That's on Banggood right now. I'll put the discount code in the description with my uh, affiliate link, but I, I can recommend the Femi, I think, over the Xeno 2 for sure, for just a ton of different reasons. Uh, now, the reason that we came out today was to take a look at the video settings with the white balance on automatic. We did it with all three drones. My suspicion is it looked a lot better on my FPV screen. My suspicion is when we look at the SD footage, it's going to look way better than some of my previous attempts uh, with this drone. Previously I had the white balance set on sunny and I just always thought it, it, it looked too warm, the colors just weren't right, uh, and I had some people give me a tip about that and, and thank you to uh, Doug Wells and Alex Marks and others who mentioned that because uh, I think that is probably going to make the difference. Uh, but I will also say that both of the Femis, the 2020 and 2018, as you saw, they flew just fine. Uh, if there were any hiccups at all, the 2018 we had some FPV, uh, a little bit of dropouts on FPV. Now, that in consideration here, I'm standing under a shelter with a metal roof and I've been out in the open, I suspect that would have been fine too. This guy though, the 2020, it's a testament to that new controller and the new control feature that they have on this guy. We, we had solid, we went out a kilometer and a half and it was just solid FPV uh, control, no problems at all. So, uh, so good on Femi for, for that. Uh, yeah, so we'll compare that video and hopefully that looks all right. Uh, but I'm thinking that's about it. Uh, yeah, this is Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel out. And if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. Most of all, I really appreciate you uh, taking a look at this video. And of course, we'll see you on the next one. Uh, all right, we'll see you guys later. Femi X8 SE uh, 2020 and 2018. And uh, you know, the Hubs and Zeno too, I'm not so sure. All right, see you guys.